The Canadian Grand Prix has been a part of the Formula One calendar since 1967, and the 2023 iteration will mark the 52nd time that this nation has hosted a Formula One Grand Prix. Of all of them, which was the best? Was it the 1973 race, where the winner was decided by colour of hair? 1978, where hometown hero Gilles Villeneuve dominated at the brand new track in Montreal, which would be named after him just a few years later? Or 2007, where Sir Lewis Hamilton picked up his first ever win in Formula One? Well, all are good choices, but none of them, really, stack up to the absolute barnstormer we had back in the year 2011. That year's iteration was the seventh round of the championship, and with the season we had at that point, fans of the sport, well, they knew what to expect, L let's put it that way. Back in these times, the races were not dominated by a Red Bull driven by Max Verstappen. Instead, they were dominated by a Red Bull driven by Sebastian Vettel. This dude was just in a class of one at the start of the 2010s and provided nothing in his car went wrong. As soon as he took the lead going into turn one on lap one, that'd be the last you ever see of him until he took the chicken flag to win at the end of the race. There may have only been six races done at that point, but he had already amassed over two race wins worth of points over the next driver in the standings, Lewis Hamilton. Oh boy, this really was a fun year for Formula 1. When Vettel crashed in practice, it gave the haters hope that maybe, just maybe, a chink in the armour for these guys. <laughs> nah. Fastest in the last practice and in qualifying, guess who took pole position? Again, doesn't look very promising for the race, but hey, what's one way to make a boring race exciting? Simple. Add water. The prospect of a wet weather race lifted the spirits around the track and around the world. It was never about disadvantaging one particular driver. It was about providing a chance to those who perhaps didn't have the best of cars. That's why they call these types of races the Great Equalizer. However, perhaps sensing our excitement, the fun police decided to step in. Well, isn't that some freaking nonsense? Oh well, shame on us, but thinking the FIA and Formula One would ever allow it to happen, them folks are about as fun as an East German jail cell. But hey, safety is paramount, so let us curb our disappointment for a moment. The lights go out, the green flag drops, and away they go. They potted around behind the safety car for a few laps, whilst the stewards adjudicated whether or not it was dry enough for the world's best drivers to cope with. This could take a while, so let's talk about this video sponsor for a moment. So by now, a lot of you will be aware of what a VPN is. It's a service that encrypts the data that you send through the internet, thereby protecting your data, keeping any of the more unpleasant members of society from getting at it. This is but one of the services provided by Surfshark. Oh, you thought that was it? No way, there is more to this thing. All right, so we all love streaming stuff. Don't lie, we're all addicted. But sometimes we can run into the slight issue of content being restricted based on whatever your region is. It's the cold, hard reality we live in. I don't know. However, with Surfshark, you can bypass that by simply changing your location. Not only is this good for people who want to keep up with their favorite content, but it can be a great tool for those who live in countries that heavily censor their people for whatever their reasons may be. It ain't quite teleportation, but it is about as close as we're gonna get right now. So. Here's some incentive. Use my link in the description and enter the promo code Josh Revel for an exclusive offer and three extra months for free. Which means for around about a couple of bucks a month, you have the security of Sir Lancelot's race seat. Plus, those three free months. And a 30 day money back guarantee as well. So what the bloody hell are you waiting for? Mega thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Is that damn safety car still going around? Ugh, it is. Alright. Let's talk about the drivers then. Obviously, Sebastian Vettel was the favorite to win that day. He was running faster than six month old cheese and the Red Bull was a goddamn rocket that year. But his teammate, Mark Webber, was no slouch and could always find himself in prime position to win, provided he doesn't do what he did last time and rained. McLaren had an all-star lineup in Lewis Hamilton and Jensen Button, two world champions and the pride of Great Britain. Having said that, despite McLaren still being a fast, reputable team at the time, they turned up to Montreal with way too high a downforce setting in the hope that rain would turn up that weekend. The Mercedes outfit had Nico Rosberg and Michael Schumacher. Very nice lineup indeed. But the team back then was just as lousy as what they were when they rolled out a car with no side pods. So provided everyone ahead of them didn't blow each other up, neither of them really had a chance today. And of course, there was Ferrari, Felipe Massa, who was starting in a very respectable third place, and Fernando Alonso, who was in second. And when the race eventually started on lap a million, he used that second placing well and was right on Vettel's gearbox. This caught Seb unawares a little bit running wide in the final chicane and leaving himself vulnerable to attack. Alonso sensed an opportunity, but it wasn't enough. Seb retained the lead, going into the first few corners. But while Fernando was prepared to yield to a rear bull, Hamilton 
wasn't. He dived down the inside of Mark Webber, but there'd be some miscalculations. And what resulted was Mark Webber pointing very much the wrong way. He showed some incredible speed that year, as he does every year. But 2011 was a wretched year for Lewis. Stuff that was happening off the track was affecting his performance on it. He found himself in the midst of quite a few incidents that year. And on lap seven, he found another. The number one rule of racing, never run into your teammate. Doesn't matter whose fault it is. But out of curiosity, whose fault was it? Well, no one's, really. Visibility is terrible in these cars at the best of times. When rain is like this, lack of visibility means you have to apply the Frank Montagni approach, a la keep between the white lines and aim for the red lights. It's a racing incident. Not every accident needs someone to blame, even though Jensen was having quite the gaze in his rear view mirrors. But while we couldn't really blame Lewis or Jensen, it did virtually destroy their races. Lewis was out with broken suspension, or at least they thought it was broken, and Jensen had to come in for new tires, throwing him down to 12th place. Still, could be worse. I had to open my mouth there, didn't I? For McLaren, it was a one-two punch that threw them out of racing contention and lifted Mercedes up to a point where maybe they could fight for a podium. Maybe even more? Nah. No chance. By this stage, Seb was just walking away from the field, displaying such poise in the wet conditions not seen since Antonio Giovinazzi started walking on water. Even after a safety car to recover Lewis's car and sweep up debris, he remained in control. This was in contrast with his teammate, Mark Webber, who was battling two things, an intermittent issue with his gear shifts and an annoyingly quick pair of drivers piloting Renaults who wouldn't let him by. Jensen Button, meanwhile, had no issue getting past folks. After his tango with Lewis on lap seven, he was pitted and fitted with intermediate tires, which was soon proving to be much, much faster than the wet weather tires. He was absolutely flying out there, and pretty soon, teams up and down the paddock were beginning to think that maybe those tires were a good idea, and pitted their drivers. Other teams, though, weren't so sure, and so now it was just a waiting game as to who made the right call, and who ruined their race. On lap 19, we got an answer. Hang on a second. Where is everybody? Forget about the driver's visibility, we can't see them! The stewards decided that that couldn't be right and sent Bird Mindlander out in the safety car for the third time on lap 20. All those on intermediate tyres cut their losses and came back into the pit lane to get back on the wet with the tyres. Sebastian Vettel, meanwhile, who didn't make a pit stop in the first place, came into the pit lane anyway for a new set of wet tyres, you know, just because he could. Of course, he was still in the lead when all was said and done. However, he began to complain about how turns 9 to 13 were pretty much undrivable. Pretty soon though, this point of view changed. Within a couple of laps, it was the whole damn track which was undrivable. With the cameras barely able to pick up the cars and the sports daring world champions complaining about the literal rivers flowing across the racetrack, the Grand Prix was stopped. Red flag. The right decision, really. Like we said, safety is paramount. It's just as well too, because as soon as the race was stopped, it started to rain harder. They weren't going to be racing anytime soon despite their best efforts. The full coverage of this race is available via F1 TV, but if you're planning to skip the red flag period, I implore that you don't. The adventures of this red-shouldered bird make the excruciating boredom all the more worthwhile. Drivers spent the time either trying to find shelter or trying to find the stones to talk to Rihanna. Vettel, meanwhile, was still being as methodical as ever, combing over data, still seeking the edge over his rivals. The crowd, meanwhile, sat twiddling their thumbs, with some even resorting to dueling air horns and taking hostages. Finally, after over two hours, we received the message that at 10 to 4 p.m. the race would get back underway after another seven laps behind that damn safety car. Vettel stormed away into the lead, as you would have expected, and in second was the Sauber of Komoi Kobayashi, which not a hell of a lot of people would have expected, despite him being a clear talent in the eyes of anyone who knows Wheel. The benefit of not making a pit stop as well, it must be said. Massa was third, the two Renaults of Nick Heidfeld and Vitaly Petrov were fourth and fifth, Paul Resta was grinning in sixth place, Weber in seventh, Alonso was in eighth, Pedro de la Rosa, who was deputizing for Sergio Perez in that round, was in ninth, and Jensen Button rounded out the top 10 after his wild adventures of the start and 89 million pit stops. Pretty soon, however, it became 89 million and one because with all those laps behind the safety car, the track had now dried up enough for intermediate tires. What a farce. You know, for such a great race, this thing did have some long stretches of complete emptiness about it. A lot of people made a pit stop, but a few did not, which gifted us all the horrific sight of Narain Kane in an HRT battling inside the top 10. He was very quickly put in his place though, with the likes of Button storming through the field on his brand new intermediates. But pretty soon his storming became too much. 
surprise, surprise, another safety car. Alonso was out of the race. His car beached and gearbox likely broken. It was a wretched race for Nando because even though he ran second for a while that day, he really just had no pace. And this was merely the cherry on top of the sh Sunday. Button drove away, but not exactly scot-free. The contact resulted in a puncture, which forced him to come back into the pits for some new tires. And when he went back out on track, he was stone dead last. But you know, searching for a silver lining here, he did at least avoid a penalty for his gymnastics with Alonso. Michael Schumacher made a move on Weber and pulled it off. Paul DeResta made a move on Nick Heidfeld and he didn't pull it off. On lap 46, the stewards felt that it had been long enough since it was last a safety car and so decided to enable DRS whilst everyone was still running around on wet weather tyres on a greasy track. Remarkably, however, all the drivers avoided the urge to kill each other. At least for now. None of this though really made that much of a difference to Vettel who was just walking away to almost certain victory. Kobayashi was still in second but soon came under attack from Massa who was coming under attack from Schumacher. When the battle was done, Shumi was in second, Massa was still third for a little bit and Kobayashi fell into the clutches of quick Nick Heidfeld. By this stage there were only 15 laps remaining. The cars were now on slick tires and the drivers were becoming a little itchy. Heidfeld could see fourth place right in front of him. Okay, not ideal. Best idea from here is not to go too fast lest the front wing falls under your wheels. The crash may have thrown his car behind the barrier, but there was still debris on track. And you could guess what that means. But of course, safety is paramount. And thankfully this marshal emerged unscathed. When the safety car went away, Schumacher went on the attack. He went to the outside on Vettel. This was Michael Schumacher in 2011, fighting for the lead of a Grand Prix once again. But ultimately, it was no use. The Mercedes just didn't have the pace to keep up with that red ball. Seb would run away again and Shumi found himself under attack from Weber, who found himself under attack from, of all drivers, Jensen Button, who despite the trials and tribulations, found himself within a whiff of a podium placing. Button was a master with the changing additions, a product of his upbringing on the British karting scene. And he was also one smart dude. None of this was down to dumb luck. Button was in his element. The three battled it out for second place in some of the best racing you would ever hope to see in this sport. Weber tried once and it didn't work. He tried a second time and it really didn't work. Button moved up to third, which soon became second. And now he had five laps to hunt down Vettel. Despite being a seemingly impossible task, Button was actually gaining. Gaining to a point where with one lap to go, he was right there. Right up until that last lap, Button was just getting faster and faster and faster. He was reigning in the world champion. But surely even then, even with the gap being under a second, there was no chance. Never say never. That chink in the armor of what seemed to be an indomitable Red Bull Vettel combo was laid bare. Button took the lead, completed the rest of the lap and crossed the line, the winner of the 2011 Canadian Grand Prix. At over four freaking hours, this was the longest ever race in Formula One history and was regarded as an instant classic by pundits all over. It was a truly scintillating drive from Button to have come from last at one point to win the Grand Prix. But there were also some other drives there that do deserve some praise too. Michael Schumacher had proven in that race that he still had it in him to fight for a podium before Weber had to come along and piss in everyone's cornflakes. Kamui Kobayashi too drove an excellent race and Jaime Aljaswari in the Toro Rosso put in what could only be described as a miracle. After starting from 24th position, he climbed up 16 positions to finish in 8th place. It's just a shame that no one really paid attention to it. Everyone was heaping praise over Jensen and fair enough. But was this a product of his competitors dropping out, being on the right tire at the right time, lucking out over the conditions? Well, chalk it up to that all you like. But that's racing. And yes, there were a gratuitous amount of pit stops and the red flag was out for way too long. The use of safety car was ridiculous too, but when that green flag dropped, what we ended up with was a race for the ages. Regardless of what flag you fly, not a lap went by that made you want to slam your head into the desk. It's something we still talk about, something that we'll still talk about in the years to come. About good hard racing for sure, but also determination to never give up. Even when you see a Red Bull cruising to victory up front, always remember, it ain't over till it's over.